Hello and welcome to my craft room disaster. Anyway, it's a mess today. I've been crafting. I was asked to make a little mini album tutorial using the tag kit. And so first I thought I'd show you the ones I did. Um, what I did was I had a lot of extra eight by eight paper and it was paper that I didn't really like a lot, you know, cause I'd used up all the good stuff. And so I decided I needed to do something with the stuff that didn't turn me on so much. So what I did was I made these little tiny mini albums and these are great. They hold a gift card and they're going to be for my uh, co-workers for Christmas. So this is one I made and it'll hold, I think, 12 pictures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, it'll hold twelve. Um, you could just put a picture here or put a tiny picture on the back of the tag, whatever. And then the gift card can go right in this slot here. And I made this using dies that I got from the same place that I bought the uh, gift tag album from, which was KS Craft. And I got them off of Amazon because I've had too many problems with Alibaba or AliExpress, whatever it's called. Sorry, AliExpress. So anyway, there's one. Then I made this one. You can see they're all very, just very, very simple. This one has the tag there. It, this one actually has two tags. So I bet you this one will go to my boss. I know, showing favoritism. And then there's this one. And then there's this one. And I just decorated the covers with um, die cuts and flowers that I got from Hobby Lobby. And then this one has a sentiment that I got out of an Anna Griffith kit. So let me show you how to do that. And let me show you the die. And we'll talk about it because we are modifying this a little bit to make it slim. So I'll be right back with all the goodies. The dies that I used for this, as I said, were from um, KS Craft. And they're the mini tag album die. And so the pieces that I used was the inlay piece that cut out the little tags. Oops, sorry, my fingers are sticky. And then I used the page piece that I used for the covers and the inside pages. And then I cut out the spine piece. Now with the spine piece, I did modify this because it makes a super thick spine. I'll show you that. Look how thick this one is. It's over two inches, I think, across. Oh, don't have my ruler out, I'm sorry. But yes, it's over two inches across. And it can make an album that can hold, oh, I don't know, I think, gosh, 30 pictures or something. So this one has flip pages, it has pockets here more flip pages this one is huge so if you wanted to make a huge photo album if you have a big family christmas gathering you could make your sorry three that way as well you could make your um, photo album and then after christmas you could fill it up with all your pictures you could put lists of, of gifts or funny happenings whatever and then the next Christmas, you could bring it out and everybody could have fun looking through it and remembering the Christmas before as you all get ready to celebrate your new Christmas. You could do this for a wedding, um, anything. The last video I made, I did it for a baby book and I put the gift card inside the baby book and I also made a little two by three inch card uh, for the girl that was having the baby and it was really very pretty. I made a rosette, put a rosette on it on the cover. 
it even comes with these little, isn't this so much fun? These little pieces that you can use to uh, make the little tie thing. So I really like this tie. It's just so versatile. All right. So I cut out all those pieces. Now you're going, how many pieces, Jean? Okay. Let me figure that out too. Um, six pieces for the covers. And then for the pages, I did 11 total pages. So you want to cut 11 pages total out of your base paper using this die. And I just used a black. The reason I use black is for whatever reason I love it. And I thought that, you know, it would be very striking with the bright colors of the Christmas paper. The other die I used was a die set I got from Chaos Craft off of Amazon. It was very inexpensive. And it cuts pockets and the hole for the pocket. And this is um, the little reinforcer to keep the hole stronger. And it comes in two sizes. It comes in smaller size and a larger size. Um, on the album that I made for my family, I did make a pocket putting this on the diagonal and I made pockets using this straight. Oh, the other thing I'm gonna do with the one for my family is I also cut out cute little uh, tags and I'm gonna have them each journal because I really don't think I'll have 37 pictures for Christmas, but I'm gonna have them journal on the back of the tags either a special wish that they wish for the family in the coming year or a letter to Santa for the little itty bitties or a letter to uh, Jesus for the other little itty bitties and you know just whatever they want to do so I just thought that would be fun and it'd be a cute memory on the big thick one I did use this die set as well it's a cardinal two cardinals and they have Christmas baubles <laughs> So that was fun. So let's go ahead and begin. First, I am going to do the cover. And for the cover, I like to have a thicker cover than I do the pages. I just like the difference of the between the two. So what I've done is for the cover, I'm going to use three of the pages, all right, to make my cover. So I have already here, I'm going to fold on the score line. Okay, so I fold it on the score line. On this one, this piece, I've cut the score line off. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to cut along the score line. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. Let me fold it. Just because I want to cut that off. So I'll just take my scissors and cut right along the edge. So I will have two that don't have the scores, the foldovers, and I will have one that does. Okay. So taking my three, I'm just going to layer them. But I'm going to layer them so that my score line will be the one on the bottom. And you do want to line them up as well as you're able. And you do want the glue that's going to come out of the bottle. So here we go. Oh dear, I think I need to refill my glue. Oh my gosh, that'll show you how crazy I've been. Let's try this bottle of glue. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my glue sort of close to the edge. Do a little swoosh of glue up. Okay, so this is my piece that has the score line. Now I'm going to take this next piece and I'm just going to lay it right over the top, lining up all the edges. And then I'm just going to go ahead and press. I'm not worried that glue is squishing out because I'm going to cover that later. 
All right, if you have a bone folder, go ahead and use that. It'll just make your life a little easier. And now I'm going to layer my third piece. So once again, I am keeping the piece with the uh, score line on the bottom. I tell you, this little uh, die set is absolutely adorable. I just love it. And there's just, I'm a mini album freak, but normally I make them by myself. I don't, I mean, you guys see all the stuff I do with dies, but normally I make mini albums by myself. All right, so I've glued on my other top, and this makes for a very substantial page. Now, one thing I do want to tell you when you're making these for your pages, make sure you use like a 65 pound. You don't want to use 110 pound. 110 pound cardstock is too heavy and it's going to crack on you. So the next thing I did was I took the spine die and I cut out one of the spine dies. This has been cut down, but I, I here let's pretend ah, let's pretend this is the spine. Okay, so I cut out one of these and I used a lightweight chipboard. What I did was I just used the packaging that uh, my graphic 45 paper was on. Let's see. I just cut out a piece of that and then what I did was I measured and I cut it down one inch so measured in one inch and went down and then on the other side in from one inch and went down because it's not uh, it's just a, a shade over two inches then because I am using the uh, packaging from my paper I just went ahead and I inked all my edges because I don't want that light to show so, see, I have made another cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spine piece, lay it right next to the, uh, the hinge, you know, where we scored. Yeah, I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to lay my score thingy line area right over it. Stick glue on it. Oh, Lord. Okay. I'm going to stick glue on it. There, I've got my glue on it. And I have lined it up at the bottom. You probably can't tell, but I've lined it up with the bottom of my cover. And then I'm just going to fold this over, and I'm holding my... Uh, piece of chipboard or it's not even as thick as chipboard it's cereal box weight really and I'm just gonna go ahead and rub in my glue because I want that to stick really well and sometimes with uh, the cereal boards you know they have a little kind of plasticky coat on them so it's a little bit harder all right so once I have that on then I'm going to take my next piece and my score line is on the inside and I'm just going to, hope you can see, butt the edges up, making sure that my spine is equal with the bottom of my cover. I like it that way because I think it just kind of holds the pages a little bit better if you get them a little bit heavy. So now I'm just going to glue my hinge piece, my flange, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to take the other cover and the spine. I'm going to line them up because I want everything to be straight. I want my, my little mini album to sit straight when I put it on my shelf or wherever it goes. And I'm just going to press that glue in and hold it down and hope that it will stick nicely. Just like that. Okay, then also with my spine die, I cut out two, uh, one spine 
piece of the cardstock. Now, I also measured over one inch and cut it down and did that on the other side too. So I have two pieces. So one's gonna go here to cover those. And then the other one is gonna go on the inside to cover this. And this will also make my book just that much sturdier, right? So taking my piece, I'm just gonna glue Believe it or not, there's a method to my madness for doing this in real time. If you're using 12 by 12 cardstock, you should be able to get um, six page pieces out of it. For the decorative paper, I used um, eight by eight cardstock and I was able to get two pages out of each one, two, uh, not pages, but two of the page covers. Right, so I put that in there. Now I'm going to put this one here. And as you can tell, this goes very quickly. And it makes a really awesome gift, I think. And I'm just gluing this on. There we go. And if you have any white edges showing, you can go ahead and, of course, ink them up. Or, if you want to, you can just use layered cardstock. You don't even have to use the serial weight board. So I'm going to let those dry, and I'm going to work on my pages. So for my pages, I want them to open out. I want to have two that fold out. Okay. So this one's been made, and I'm going to make the next one. So I'm going to take two of my tags. I have scored them. Oops, this one didn't cut quite nicely, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. All right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one of the sides of my scores. I think I'll use this one. And I'm just going to put the other one up right next to it. So my here's my piece. You see my, I don't know if you can see that score line, but it's scored. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to butt it up to it. And I'm going to fold my piece over even because I want to make sure that my edges are all straight. And then I'm just going to fold it over and squish it in place. You want to kind of take care that everything is lined up well. And I'm just going just to push that glue in. Okay, and there I have a page. So to keep in mind that you're going to do um, two of these double pages. All right, so when I place it in my book, I want to have my score line folded opposite from my opening. So I don't want it to fold up, I want it to fold back. Now, keep in mind on this page, same thing. I want it to fold to the opposite side. Nope, I lied to you because I want it to open up, sorry, I want it to open up this way. Like that. So you wanna make sure, you may just have to um, fold your paper over once you've got it glued up. But, so you want it to open up like this. So one side opens up this way, one side opens up that way. What I like to do is at this point, I decide which papers I'm going to put on because I like things to kind of match. So I'm going to use this green on my inside outside edges. I don't know what to call them. And then I'm going to use, oh, I like that for the cover maybe. Uh-oh, conundrum. Hmm. 
Ooh, I don't know. There's too many choices here. Oh, I like this blue. I think I'll use the starry blue and I'll put it right next to the green. Is that weird? I don't know. I kind of like that idea. Let's see what else I have. Oh, I have that. Hmm. I don't know. I've got too many choices. Oh, you know what? I'll do the Christmas greens. Even though I can tell I was thinking about using them for the cover. That's okay. I'm going to do the greens. All right, so get rid of my blue here. And I'm just going to put glue all over the paper. This is the nicest paper. I don't think Graphic 45 makes it anymore, but it was the Cupid Christmas paper from a couple of years ago. And I bought it because my mom, who's no longer with me, loved, loved Cupid dolls. And so I just thought it was cute. And I bought it in memory of her. I made a bunch of stuff that I wish I could have given her. All right, so I'm going to glue that one down. And I'm going to glue this one down. Oh, look, there's some of the cupies. Aren't they cute? That's a little cupie. And those guys are kind of cupie-ish. So in case you don't know, Rose O'Neill is the inventor of the cupie doll. And that was around the turn of the century, I believe. And she has a house that you can go through down near, oh golly, is it Branson? Yeah, down near Branson, Missouri. And it's really fun because they sell cupie dolls and you see where she lived and it was just a beautiful, beautiful home. Actually, it's the land that makes it so darn beautiful. All right. Let's just go ahead and finish gluing here. Because I want to show you how to set the pages in your book as well. Because um, when you cut it down to the spine, when you cut the spine down to one inch, it makes it so easy to place the pages in there and you don't even have to measure, think, or do anything. Which is my way of doing stuff. I don't like to measure, think, or do anything. Alrighty, let me show you what we have so far. So our pages, when they open, they will open up like that. And I like that look. You may not like that look. You can do yours however you like. But for me, I'm liking that. So I have to think about my inside cover now. And what do I want for my inside cover? And I think maybe I want the blue for my inside cover. And because I want the next page to match, which will be this page. Oh, look, I've already done it. Oh, I'm smart. <gasps> Yay, Jean. Oh yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And then I just need to put something here. I'm not quite sure what I want to use for that, but I will know in a moment. Go ahead and glue this in. I'm not sure how happy I'm going to be doing this because I think I had wanted to, originally I think I'd planned to put my tag here, or not my tag, but my, my pocket with so I could put the gift card in it, so there's my pocket, but if I wanted to, I guess I could always, oh no, I have these, so I can use these at the end of the book. All right, so now I just have to decide what I want on this page. Ooh. I have these. Those are fun. Oh, look. I have a little cute piece again. 
Hmm. Okay. Well, I think I might leave this and decide in a minute because I don't have to cover it before I put it in. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and I'm going to put glue on my hinge here because I want to glue this page in. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this, this light is driving me nuts. I'm going to take my cover and I'm going to take my glued edge and I'm going to fold my cover up, slide my glued edge right up next to it, make sure that my pages are all perfectly aligned at the bottom, which should also help it be aligned at the side. And I'm just going to push. So I rub that glue into the paper. And then see, I have, oops, piece of paper there. I have some pages. I need to do something with this page. I don't think I want it to be blue though. I could if I wanted to, but I don't think I, I could put my pocket there. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's glue the next page in, even though I haven't done the back. Although, I think I will. I think I'll use, ooh, I'm gonna use this red. I think thinking I like the candy cane look. All right, let's do that. Let's glue this on to the first one. I wanted to tell you, I really appreciate you guys that subscribe so much. I think it's awesome. I can't believe anybody would want to watch me craft. You guys are great. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this page on. to glue this page on here. I'm not going to worry about the back set because I'm not sure what I want to do there yet. Okay, putting on my decorative piece. And then I'm going to come back with some Christmas stickers probably and decorate. All right, so now I want to make sure that when I glue it, everything's going to open up this way. So that tells me I need to put the glue on this side. So I'm going to put the glue on my hinge. I'm going to butt it up to the next to the pages that I just put in, I'm going to make sure that everything aligns at the bottom. And I'm going to rub my glue into those fibers as I am fond of doing. And there we go. I've got my set of pull-out pages. Now right here at this point, you have space for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pictures. And those pictures can be two by three or they can be three by three. You know, you can get one of those little craft printers and print them out, or you can um, have them printed out at Walgreens or wherever. All right, for my last page, I'm not going to have it be a two page spread. I'm going to just go ahead, take one of my pages, fold it on the score line, fold it really well, put my glue on it, and there should be exactly enough room. So I'm going to put it next to, actually, you know what? I should have done it the other way, but this way is gonna work just as well. I'm going to put it next to, um, if you've glued the wrong side, you'll be putting it next to your cover page. If you've glued the correct side, you'll be putting it next to the other page that you just did. 
I glued the incorrect side, so I'm putting it next to my cover page. So I'm just going to pick up my cover, make sure my edges touch, and then I'm going to go ahead and press down with the glue. Now for this one, I'm going to put this blue piece here. This is going to be where I put my gift card, and I just used that die I showed you earlier and cut out the pocket piece. You can do that with any X-Acto knife. But then it came with this nice layering piece, so I'm going to glue that on top. And then I'm going to glue it down. So it'll be like this. And then I'm going to find a piece of paper I like for here, and then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do for my cover. So I will be right back. Okay, so what I have decided was I found this, which is so pretty. And I'm going to go ahead and use this for my front and back covers. So I'll just glue that on really quickly. And with the layering piece for the spine, I'm going to cut one of those. And then I'm just going to cut it at a hair less than one inch wide. Just so I'll have a little bit of black around the edges. You do want to make sure that you do um, press down well on the edges. If you don't, then you might get a little lifting. And that doesn't look so nice. Okay, so there's my front. I'm going to cover my back quickly. Oops. With this piece, and you know, your front and your back cover don't have to be in the same papers. So if you're using up a paper pad, and you don't have quite enough, that's all right. Your pages also don't have to match. I just wanted mine to match because I'm weird that way. All right. So I'm going this one down. And I'm just pressing the glue into it. Now for my spine, I have several options. On this one, I used a piece of washi tape. On this side, it came over here to here, here and here. And I did use glue on it because washi tape is not my friend. And then I covered it with a piece of paper. I'm not gonna do that on this, this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover the spine with a piece of paper. And I'm thinking, I kinda like that. So I'm just going to cut that down to a shade less than an inch. Ooh, actually, oh, you know what? I have this one already cut. Oh yeah, and I'm just gonna glue it right onto the spine. I mean, really, you guys, this is pretty much made in real time. I just glued on the other papers. It took me about five minutes. So add five minutes to the length of the video, and that's about how long it's going to take you to make one of these. I did, however, do all my cutting before, obviously, before the video started. Okay, so now I'm just pressing that down. Here comes the fun part. I'm going to decorate my cover. I'm thinking... I just made this out of um, stickers and... A leaf dye I had and then the poinsettias that you get from Hobby Lobby with some of the uh, oh it's a sticker for Christmas lights I just glued it all together so I'm just going to glue that on I'm taking care to put a little bit of glue onto the actual rhinestone stickers because I hate it when stuff falls off. And I think I'm going to put this up here and just kind of cover the tag hole because because I feel like it. Not for any reason other than that. I'm just going to press this into place and hope that I've got it centered well enough. I have old eyes. I really can't tell. Hopefully, whoever gets this will be so delighted that I bothered to make them something that they won't care. 
And then this is a piece of the QP paper and it says Merry Christmas. And so I cut that out and then I just backed it on a piece of um, black card just to give it some definition. And I'm going to pop it up on some foam tape. So I'm just going to put my foam tape on it. Oops. You don't have to use as much as I'm using. I just got carried away. This is that Dollar Tree stuff. It's, it's uh, not sold in the craft section. I think it's sold in the automotive section. This stuff is great. It's days. Like, good luck ever trying to get it off of anything, including your walls. Oops, trying to take the back off. Sorry, because I went hog wild here and used so much. It's going to take a hot minute. So in the baby album that I made, I put in a gift certificate to Target so she could go buy some baby clothes. And in the Christmas ones, I think I'm going to use the Starbucks gift certificate for my coworkers. All right, I have to stand up because I want to center this the best I can on the cover. Oh my gosh, it's so hard for me. Oh well, here we go. I just did it. There we go. And there's the cover of our album. I think it's cute. If you wanted to, you could glue a bow back here or you could um, put a piece of ephemera that says Merry Christmas. Just whatever floats your boat. And then here's our album once again. And then I'm going to pretend this is a gift card. And I'm just going to slide it right in the pocket. And there you go. Isn't that cute? I mean, really seriously, who wouldn't want to have a gift that somebody made? And if you want to dress it up even more, I have some little things already cut out. Because there is almost a quarter of an inch between each page. So you can use little chunky things. So I'm going to use some holly berries. I'm going to put one up at the top here, just because that hole centers it for me and it's easy on me. And I'm going to put one in the bottom corner, just like that. And as you can see, I can still close it. It doesn't do anything to my book. I have this really pretty bow. Let's see if I can use that somewhere. Yep. Or I can use it right there. Oh, I still have to put pages in here. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to make those my pages because those are very pretty. And then back here, I think I'm just going to go with a piece of holly there and a maybe a matching oops, piece. Hmm, I'm not sure now. Hold on. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe a piece up here. And a piece down there. There. There you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I really enjoyed having someone ask me to make it. I think that's really cool. Um, if you have any different ideas for using this tag set, this tag uh, mini album set, please put them in the comments below because I just love this set. It's just so easy. 
and you can make really nice gifts for people and they seem to really enjoy them. Oh, and you know, another thing you could do that would be really fun is if you make it for a birthday or something, you could um, put in pictures that you took of the entire year and that would be really nice too. So yeah, anyway, like, subscribe, put comments. I like to know what everybody's up to. Thank you. Bye-bye.